Hi everyone, am I audible? Hello, am I audible guys? Hello. Hi everyone, happy morning. Welcome to an academy need English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today it is the part two of evolution and we are going to talk about the evidences, right? So, tell me how are you people and are you excited and are you revising properly? Is there any problem related to your preparation? If it is so, you can ask me now. I am done. Now you tell me. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sangeeta, I really don't know. I really don't know. Something happened and uh, you know, most of the time I started my session late. I literally don't know. That's why, you know, I'm not even saying sorry because I'm not even improving that thing, right? So, good morning, good morning, good morning. Tell me how are you. Guys, which slot do you want, right? This morning 10.30 slot or the evening will work for you. Tell me. Ha, wanna come, wanna come. That's what I have learned, na? That's Tamil, right? Wanna come, ipidi irukenga. That's what I have learned so far. That's all. And another thing I, that I know, I think that is, ha, that is in Telugu, that is Namaskaram. That is Namaskaram. Acha, Rajesh is saying, I'm 10.30, but, but many students are there. I have seen that yesterday many students were there in the class. So I think the evening slot is working for all of you. Do let me know in the comment section, okay? Do let me know in the comment section. So now let's start the class, guys. And let me tell you one thing. See, Unlock 20 is there. If you want to be the part of any of the course, if you want to buy, right? Across the Unacademy platform, any of the course you want to buy, even, uh, you know, any crash course, the plus course, iconic, whatever it is, you will get an additional discount of 20%. And yes, but which code you have to use? You have to use it. It's Ambika 10. So if you will use that code, right you will get additional 10 uh, 20 percent discount and here in the description box uh, uh, yes so here in the description box you guys can see the link for our batches i have started class 12 syllabus so if you want to be the part feel free to join in right and see this video bache i have posted it four days back right yesterday we took us uh, me and gopika ma'am we took a strategy session no right so still students were asking the same thing but in this video Right, in this video, I have compared your uh, NEET 2023 and 2024 syllabus. Here you guys can see. This is for 2023 and even 2024 syllabus is there. Okay, so if there is any confusion related to the reduced syllabus, do watch this video, bache. Everything will be crystal clear to you then. Done? Okay, now let's go back to the topic. Let's start the topic and that is evolution okay so what we have discussed so far it was very basic and uh, i'm going to ask you the questions as well of course how can i leave that so the topic that we started yesterday it was evolution so what is evolution as per darwin can you just tell me what is evolution as per yes as per darwin okay there is one question I, i'm finding it interesting ma'am do you believe in evolution yes i do believe right if i talk about the mobile phones right you can talk about anything anything initially mobile phones were uh, like what keypad and now the touch screen and now again the advancements uh, still the advancement is going on you know that so even if if uh, these uh, you know these uh, things these electronics if they are improving that much don't you think that there will be the uh, that even we are also adapting in different different ways even we are also improving don't you think so Yes, very good Nandini, excellent Vachi Nandini is right that as per Darwin, the evolution is decent with modification, right? Evolution is decent with modification. What is it? It is decent with modification. Clear Vachi? That's what we have studied. So ultimately evolution is to unroll, unfold the uh, hidden things of course right and it's a time taking process it's a time taking process it explains like whatever you see in your surrounding as per if i talk about the evolution whatever you see in your surrounding it's not mandatory that it it was like that only no no right right so it it's uh, from if you compare that particular you can take the example of any of the plant you can take the example of any of the animals right they they modify 
right if you compare them with their ancestors you will see the changes as per the environmental change why because we need to adapt okay so we even talk we are even going to talk about the variations clear bache so in the last class we discussed the theories okay right we discussed the theories theories for what theories for the origin of origin of what theories for the origin of this universe as well the big bang theory right then we talked about the theories for the origin of life okay and the most acceptable one is you know that that is operan and heldane right that is operan and heldane's theory of origin of life right bachche right bachche so that's what we discussed in the last class i hope you remember this part yes i hope you remember this part isn't it isn't it isn't it yes or no tell me yes or no isn't it that's what we have studied operan and heldane's theory so can you just tell me what we have covered in it can you just tell me can you just give me an idea about it yes everyone can you just tell me operan and heldane's theory of origin of life which is also known as naturalistic theory which is also known as modern theory which is uh, yes it is simply known as operan and heldane theory so that's what you need to remember so when we talk about this operan and heldane theory which here we divide this into two parts okay one is your chemogeny that is your chemical evolution and the another part is your biogeny that is your biological evolution so here when you talk about this theory we even discuss the experiment ore and miller's experiment right ore and miller's experiment right bachche so that experiment is kind is a proof right right as per that experiment yes it is possible to have a uh, chemical evolution it is possible to form uh, the organic compounds from such inorganic elements as well right right clear bachche so that's what we have covered in the last class so ure and miller's experiment is a very important topic so the kind of question that you people can get from this part is see the temperature for that experiment it was 800 degree celsius right they took this experiment for near about 18 days the gases that they have used is your ammonia methane hydrogen and water vapors if i talk about the parts one part of ammonia two parts of a uh, methane two parts of hydrogen clear bachche so initially what they got they got the amino acids which amino acid yes bachche which amino acid alanine aspartic acid and then comes the glycine clear bachche then comes the glycine is that clear so that's what we have covered so far so this part is very important now because in this chemical evolution we have seen that how that hydrogen carbon nitrogen oxygen they are forming methane they are forming water they are forming ammonia and then further bachche they are going to form what the sugars right the fatty acids right the amino acids nitrogenous bases and slowly slowly with time that all uh, right that compounds are going to form your poly uh, polymers like the proteins right the nucleic acids like the polysaccharides so that's what we have covered so far now when you talk about the biological evolution so what do you think what do you think how it started anyone anyone see it's very simple we all know that it is the protoplasm which is the physical basis of life i hope you all are aware of it right i hope you all are aware of it that it is the protoplasm which is the physical basis of life do you know that yes tell me in the chat section quick tell me in the chat section and guys quickly hit the like button as well and yeah tomorrow you know na tomorrow is our marathon day that's friday hai na tomorrow is our marathon day that's friday so this is the chapter that we are going to cover tomorrow at 6 pm 
okay that's the chapter that we are going to finish tomorrow at 6 pm that is your body fluid and circulation so it's a marathon day tomorrow and bache here right it's not like that that i will you know just give you the overview no 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 in detail we will revise this topic okay in detail we are going to revise this topic that is body fluid and circulation fine okay so now we were talking about the biological evolution students please be the part of be the part of this discussion okay it is the second part of operon and Haldane's theory and it is also known as biogen things are very simple here okay even things are very simple here see now we are saying that we have we have the polymers okay what do we have we have the polymers and you know that everything is taking place in the the life is arising in the ocean water and the sea water and how it was happening when you know water vapor formed uh, and because of the forces as well even the temperature was coming down because temperature was coming down initially the torrential rainfall was there so that rainfall was filling up that depressions and it resulted in the formation of oceans so in these oceans what is happening all that compounds which are present there they will keep on reacting okay they will keep on reacting at that time sun used to be the only source of energy or the till today it is a sun which is the ultimate source of energy but at that time because you know even initially atmosphere was not there then it became reducing but ozone layer and all right ozone layer and all it was not there so directly that harmful radiations that that powerful radiations were also reaching the earth surface isn't it isn't it so reaction for reaction the good amount of energy was there right so here what was happening these polymers they were forming if i'm talking about the polymers i'm talking about the polysaccharides here isn't it i am even talking about the yeah i'm even talking about your proteins here i hope you know fats are not the polymers but again they are useful for you know forming membranes and all right even the nucleic acids and all right even the nucleic acids and all isn't it isn't it right so what was happening initially see again i'm repeating this line no one has ever witnessed the evolution right we got some results we got some evidences on the basis of that we explain a certain process okay that's the story actually in near future yes there is the possibility that you know some other findings can discard whatever we have studied so far right even even it is possible okay even it is possible yeah but lightning is also lightning is something very important fellow for that uh, reactions okay so now the point here is many scientists they tried the things in the labs so we come up with two points right we come up with two points co-servates and microspheres do you know about it co-servates and microspheres that is something important which so co-servates it was this this is related to operon microsphere it is related to fox okay so do you have any idea do you have any idea about it yes bacha do you have any idea yep tell me yes any idea do you have wait i'll explain so but it's not like that that suddenly you know life started no no like if let's say if this is a cell if this is a cell let's say it is a cell which formed first right it is the first form of life so before that there are many aggregates that formed and then they resulted in this particular cell that's the story bache. that's the story so when we started we talk about the right we we talk about the origin of protobionts we talk about the origin of protobionts we talk about the origin of proto cells are you getting it right so they these things are basically the part of pre prebiotic life right right it is the part of what it is the part of pre uh, like it is something prebiotic okay prebiotic prebiotic means right prebiotic means before actual life right before actual life like if i'm talking about a cell right if i'm talking about a cell before that cell before that cell what was happening right right so this is before life right something before life now what is happening now i am telling you that we have the we have these polymers right bache what am i saying i'm saying now we have the polymers now bache these polymers they have started living together right they have started living together it is believed 
okay i'll tell you right the, their experiment the experiment of these two scientists right they help to understand this process so let's say the polymers they have started living together they separated they have separated themselves from the surrounding like let's say carbohydrate proteins they are like oh let's stay together right we, we, we will make our own world right we will not interact with our environment that much okay okay imagine it like this so what happened initially bache these polymers they started forming the aggregates okay they started forming the aggregates they started separating them from the surrounding so we use the word in general we use the word protobionts for them they are not living structures let me tell you right they are not living structures initially when we discuss this phenomena we say that 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 polymers they started aggregating so if they are aggregating means somewhere they will increase their size also right trisha if they are aggregating it means they are also increasing their size isn't it they are also increasing their size the growth is there the first thing that we are going to see here is what the growth right they are growing they are growing isn't it growth it's the feature of a living being i'm not saying the defining feature but the feature of a living being isn't it isn't it so growth but 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 this structure was not able to reproduce it was not able to divide into two okay so initially slowly slowly that's how right that's how they started that's how they started uh, forming these aggregates so these aggregates are nothing they are the protobionts right bachche they are nothing they are the protobionts so they have they have separated them from the uh their uh, environment and they are showing the growth as well but you won't see the reproduction here yet clear bachche you are not going to see the reproduction here right and trust me these protobionts here they started maintaining their internal environment okay they started maintaining their internal environment clear bachche so that's what you need to keep in your mind is that clear that's what you need to keep in your mind clear bachche right so when you talk about these protobionts so the two important protobionts are these these coservates and microsphere they are nothing but the protobionts right and they are formed in labs right they are formed in labs so these are the protobionts and they are formed in lab okay okay so coservates they were formed by the operon and microspheres it was formed by the uh, fox clear bachche clear bachche so they are nothing they are what they are what they are protobionts so protobionts if i have to define i can say that this is a macro molecule right which is synthesized abiotic uh, abiotically right bachche and it's just like a colloidal drop like it is having a colloidal drop like structure clear bachche clear bachche done yes or no yes or no yes or no sure right so protobionts they are the let me define it aggregates of macro molecules okay they are the aggregates of macro molecules now when you talk about the operon uh, sorry uh, when you talk about the coservates and when you talk about the microspheres they were formed they were synthesized in lab by these two scientists now bachche when it is a coservates then what is the case exactly it is an aggregate okay it is an aggregate of these polymers but here it is not the lipid membrane that is covering it right you can say that simply a water uh, simply a very thin layer it is not lipid membrane which is covering these polymers no it's just a thin layer right it's just a thin layer you can say say that something like a water drop which is covering these polymers okay right that's covering these polymers are you getting it are you getting it so coservate is what so coservate right but it is a protobio uh, it is also a protobiont without right it's a protobiont without lipid membrane so this question can come in paper it's a protobiont which is without lipid membrane it is just having a film of water that will be the right word it is just having a film of water are you getting it yes bachche it is without lipid membrane it is just having a film of water clear clear so it is having protein polysaccharides okay protein polysaccharides okay so it is just having a film of water which is covering it clear bachche clear bachche 
okay so they can just grow they can just grow but they cannot reproduce that's what you need to keep in your mind right that's what you need to keep in your mind okay okay so what is happening here what is happening here it is just growing but it is not at all dividing fine and now when you are talking about the microspheres they are kind of proteinoids they are having the proteins so in the case of microsphere bache a, a lipid membrane is there it is not just like plasma membrane but still a lipid membrane is there done bache nandini still the lipid membrane is there when you are talking about what when you are talking about the microsphere so we even call them as proteinoid microsphere okay microspheres they are proteinoid microspheres okay they are proteinoid microspheres and they have lipid membrane okay they have lipid membrane but again bachche its composition is not same like your plasma membrane okay its composition is not same like your plasma membrane done bachche done 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 yes sure so these are the proteinoid microspheres done bachche okay so this is about the protobionts and these are two important protobionts and now with the time what happened nucleic acid came right nucleic acid came and nucleic acid also get mutated like basically initially the growth is there now it is not just the growth that we want we even want to see the next generation we even want to see the division as well okay so so uh, like when we are saying that the, these cells should have capability to get reproduced means they should know how to form the next generation that's what i am discussing right now isn't it so after protobionts right proto cells are formed again they are also non living we are not saying them they are the act, that, that is the actual life it is the non cellular form of life let me relate it with the ncert part that we have discussed yesterday and then you know you can uh, understand it in a proper way see see that's what we were discussing in the last class so we have no idea about how the first self replicating metabolic capsule of life arose so now they are talking about the first self replicating so obviously before it we have the proto bionts and then what do we have we have the proto cells now in these proto cells ultimately what we have to study what is happening bachche slowly slowly nucleic acid developed and they right they they got the ability to self uh, replicate okay okay so initially nucleic acids were there they formed but with the time right because of some mutations that's how the scientists define it because of some mutations that nucleic acid they got right that nucleic acid what they did they acquired the ability to replicate okay they acquired the ability to replicate clear bachche yes or no yes or no so nucleic acid proteins they were there so so what happened when we talk about the protocells that nucleic acids they combined with certain proteins they formed what they formed the nucleoproteins what they formed they formed the nucleoproteins and bachche these nucleoproteins okay they, they are showing a sign of life they are showing a nucleic acid plus protein it is showing a sign of life because it is a structure which is having the capability to uh, it can replicate clear bachche it can replicate done bachche done bachche so that's why it is mentioned here that first non cellular form of life again it is also non cellular right it could have originated 3 billion years back and they would have been the giant molecules rna protein polysaccharides etc so this non cellular form is considered as what these rna these proteins these polysaccharides and these capsules they reproduced their molecules perhaps so see the word is perhaps maybe like this okay like this yes bachche is that clear sure so bachche uh, e even in the chapter even in your uh, molecular basis of inheritance i told you about the rna word concept i told you about the protein word concept clear bachche i told you about the rna word concept i told you about the protein word concept now see see like what are we saying initially some people used to believe right they believe in protein word concept according to them protein came first 
because proteins are also like an enzymes right it is a protein which came first which help in this uh, replication and all some people believe it is the rna right it is the rna now which you know we discuss about many scientists so i'll uh, take one name altman right i'll take one name and that is that is altman so as per altman he discovered that rna molecules right 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 as per altman he discovered that rna molecules they also have enzymatic activity i hope you know about it rna molecules they also have enzymatic activity clear they have enzymatic activity and you know that which word we use for it we use the word ribozyme for it right we use the word ribozyme for it are you getting my point right so it is believed that if rna can act like a nucleic rna is a nucleic acid it is acting like an enzyme as well so it means right it means that rna came first right because it is enzyme so it can speed up the reactions as well and it is nucleic acid the genetic material of course so 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 many scientists they believe and this is actually that rna word concept right it is actually that rna word concept that rna molecule could carry out all the processes right like the process of replication the process of protein formation right bachche that it is the rna molecule which can take care of every thing clear bachche clear bachche right right and this rna can do it without the help of dna and protein that is actually your rna word concept any doubt yes shiva any doubt right any doubt done bachche so when that nucleic acid when it got mutated it got the ability to replicate right then then that part is the protocell and and again protocell is also non living and from that protocell we got the first cellular form your prokaryotes clear your first cellular form that is your prokaryotes clear bachche so these capsules reproduce their molecules perhaps so the first cellular forms right first cellular forms of life did not possibly originate till about 2000 million years ago are you getting my point right so the first cellular form of life did not possibly originate till about 2000 million years ago so these were probably the single cells again the word is probably here okay so from these protocells your prokaryotes they came into the life that bachche that and obviously this evolution is there in the water only so this version of biogenesis right the first form of life arose slowly through evolutionary forces from non living molecule is accepted by majority and why why they accepted it because yes it is possible right that on earlier uh, on primitive uh, earth the conditions were like that that it is possible to evolve life from the non living things is that clear is that clear so here it is making the sense okay so first cellular form of life could have evolved into the complex biodiversity of today is a fascinating story that we are going to discuss now okay done so that's it that's all okay that's it that's all so that's what you need to keep in your mind and bachche uh, okay we used to say that your prokaryotes then from these protocells right your prokaryotes came isn't it that's what we used to say that your prokaryotes came the first cellular form of life so can you tell me according to you right according to you what came first autotrophs or heterotrophs autotrophs or heterotrophs or are they photo autotrophs or are they uh, chemo autotrophs yes bachche yes according to you what is it chemo autotrophs chemo uh, photo autotrophs here yeah. chemo heterotrophs photo heterotrophs that's very easy see initially you know that right you know that what was there on planet earth all that chemicals and things isn't it all that chemicals were there in the surrounding so obviously initially chemo means chemical heterotrophs they were not the autotrophs initially they were the heterotrophs why
because they were getting the right that that cells they were getting these chemicals in the surrounding and that chemicals they were abundant okay so they can just feed on that right there is no need to make their own food they have the food they have that availability so initially chemo heterotrophs they came and from that chemo heterotrophs with the time chemo autotrophs they originated so it is not it's not like that that initially initially you used to have autotrophs what are autotrophs that can make their own food but initially it was not required so chemo heterotrophs were there heterotrophs means they are dependent on others for their uh, uh, for their food right so chemo heterotrophs means they are going to feed on the chemicals isn't it isn't it and obviously initially because no oxygen was there so obviously they are what they are anaerobic they are anaerobic isn't it they are what they are anaerobic clear bache clear bache so some of the chemotrophic bacteria right uh, they uh, some of the chemo heterotrophic bacteria they started forming the they they evolved they form chemo autotrophs okay they form chemo autotrophs like from them from these chemo heterotrophs your chemo autotrophs formed okay they started that chemo uh, they started that chemosynthesis that uh, you know uh, they started synthesizing the chemicals you can take the example of your nitrifying bacteria right we have even studied that in the plant physiology nitrifying bacteria so these are the certain examples and with the time what happened what happened what happened we got the photo right photo autotrophs as well okay they started using the light to make their own food and with the time with the time with the time we got the aerobic bacteria as well you know na not you know na there are certain bacteria which are photosynthetic but they are not releasing the oxygen they are non oxygenic photo autotrophs they are non oxygenic photo autotrophs but here 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 you you can see this here right with the time what happened bache aerobic bacteria they came into origin right so so during photosynthesis they started releasing the oxygen and slowly 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 because other life forms they also arose so what happened because of that bache that in the surrounding in the surrounding right oxygen came so basically the atmosphere from reducing it it changed to the oxidizing atmosphere so that's how it worked clear bache clear bache that's how it works so this is what you need to keep in your mind right so this is all about your bio right this is all about your biogeny done and from these prokaryotes with the time your eukaryotes evolved and that's how you know further that nucleus mitochondria evolved and then uh, that's how the eukaryotic cell form that's it that's all fine that's it that's all so now next is the evidences of evolution but before starting the evidences of evolution can we finish this particular paragraph from the ncert first see i really don't want to miss even a single point that's why you know you know these days i'm using that ncert snips and we are reading each and every line here just to make sure that you are getting everything okay and yesterday you promised us that you will be consistent but now i can see the result it's not like that and this is not going to help bachche right and if you are thinking that any teacher like any anyone like a b c any any teacher came and the, then that teacher will be like hey, okay in one hour i have finished the chapter in two hours i have finished the chapter it is not possible at all right if you are watching such lectures where teachers are claiming that in 60 minutes let's finish this chapter no it's not possible right they in 60 minutes yes they can teach you important things they can tell you about the important things but it's not possible to complete a chapter you know from scratch right to start a chapter from scratch and to finish it in 60 minutes not possible not possible okay okay so please be serious be sincere okay you have time initial 3 months you can still you if you have 6 months so initial 3 months you can invest uh, in such lectures in such detailed lectures and in next 3 months just go for the marathons just go for the one shots fine but do not start your preparation from the chapters where teacher is saying that in one hour i'll finish this chapter in two hours i'll finish this chapter not possible not possible right if you know that chapter if you have if you have studied it before then go for such videos then they are helpful otherwise they are not okay they are not so please do such things 
सो कन्वेंशनल रिलीजियस लिटरेचर टेल्स अबाउट द थेरी ऑफ स्पेशल क्रिएशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड दिस राइट राइट यास्टरडे वी हैव कवर्ड द थेरी ऑफ स्पेशल क्रिएशन एज पर दैट अर्थ इज अबाउट फोर थाउजेंड ईयर्स ओल्ड विच इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो ऑल दीज आइडियाज वर स्ट्रॉन्गली चैलेंज ड्यूरिंग द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी बेस्ड ऑन द ऑब्जर्वेशन मेड ड्यूरिंग अ सी वाइट वॉयज इन अ सेल शिप कॉल्ड एच एम एस बीगल राइट राइट सो हेयर दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द डाउन राइट हेयर दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द डाउन क्लियर बच्चे क्लियर बच्चे सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग ऑल दैट थेरीज लेट्स स्टार्ट द एविडेंसेस फॉर द इवोल्यूशन एंड टेल मी व्हाट डू यू नो अबाउट दिस टॉपिक राइट व्हाट डू यू नो अबाउट दिस टॉपिक्स एविडेंसेस फॉर द इवोल्यूशन व्हाट डू यू नो यस त्रिशा संगीता विदिशा व्हाट डू यू नो अबाउट दिस दैट्स अ गुड थिंग इफ यू आर कंसिस्टेंट बट टेल मी okay paleontological evidence is good what else by carbon dating haldin and oppen experiment is done anything else see it's very easy so it's not like that that you know i just woke up and i i started saying that oh do you know that that's how we evolved no it's not like that okay it's not like that right the scientists the archaeologists they studied many things and then they came to certain conclusion so when we talk about the evidences we are going to talk about the uh, fossil evidences bachche now when it is the fossil evidences fossil evidences means you are talking about the fossils here right and fossil evidences are known as paleontological paleontological evidences right they are known as what they are known as paleontological evidences are you getting it fossil evidences they are right so so we are going to start from yes bachche we are going to start from yes we are going to start from tell me quickly everyone yes fossil evidences your paleontological evidences clear bachche your paleontological evidences done done okay sure जस्ट अ मिनट बच्चा राइट सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द पॉजिटिव एविडेंसेज पेलेंटोलॉजिकल एविडेंसेज एंड देन बच्चे देर विल बी द मॉर्फोलॉजिकल एंड एनाटॉमिकल एविडेंसेज okay mainly we have to study yes morphological and anatomical evidences and uh, we'll be also discussing the embryological evidences right we are also going to talk about the embryological evidences so that's what we need to study bachche right so out of it this is very important your morphological and anatomical evidences because here you are going to talk about the analogy you are going to talk about the homology okay so here what are you going to discuss analogy and homology basically analogous organs and the homologous organs that's what we need to study here when it comes to the fossil evidences bachche they are they are very important and uh, you know these evidences the, the, the we mainly believe on these fossil evidences okay so here we'll be talking about one best example that is your archaeopteryx okay archaeopteryx lithography this is what we are going to discuss here and when it is the embryological evidences here we will be talking about the biogenetic law or you can say that the recapitulation theory that's what we have to discuss so ultimately one question can for sure one question can surely come from this evidences part one or two questions okay one or two questions so what we need to start first we need to start the fossil evidences which are also known as paleontological evidences so can i say here right can i say here bachche that study of fossils yes that study of fossils it is known as paleontology yes study of fossils it is known as paleontology 
can i say so yes or no can i say so that study of yes bachche the study of fossils it is known as paleontology right it is known as paleontology so bachche when you talk about the fossils what are the fossils first of all tell me this right what are the fossils here we we need to talk about the rocks as well here we need to talk about the geological time scale as well okay when we when you want to study the paleontological evidences you even need to know about the geological time scale and we are going to cover that part too okay okay see in ncert this portion is given right this part okay that trees and all and uh, yes even you talk about that right uh, that different different era periods epochs right so we have to study it accordingly then bachche so study of fossil is what the study of fossil is paleontology the study of fossil is what the study of fossil is paleontology so what are fossils can you just tell me right they are the preserved they are the remains of the hard parts isn't it they are the preserves uh, they are the remains of the hard parts isn't it so yes bachche isn't it we are talking about the evol uh, we are talking about the fossils so what are fossils yes bachche what are fossils tell me quickly tell me quickly they are the impressions or remains of hard parts of life forms right they are the impressions or remains of hard parts of life forms right of life forms isn't it and where are you going to get these parts you are going to find uh, you are going to find them in the rocks of course in the rocks now why do we compare these fossils and the uh, why do we compare the finding of fossils with the rocks why do we say that you are going to get it in the rocks see when you are talking about the rocks mainly we are going to discuss about sedimentary rock that is important sedimentary rock metamorphic and then what is it igneous okay igneous now when it is the sedimentary okay when it is a sedimentary see it is explaining everything it is formed because of the sedimentation like uh, three types of rocks are there sedimentary metamorphic igneous imagine right initially nothing like that was there with time what happened right some layers they get deposited 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 right so some sediments are there sediments you know na how are how the things are going to arrange one layer second layer third layer so many things like that is how you know they will get arranged with the time right with the time the new rocks will form i hope you are aware of it isn't it i hope you are aware of it now what's the point here bachche when you talk about the sedimentary rocks which are formed by the settlement of all that layers during the different right during the different time period okay so when we see the sedimentary rock and even if we study this rock and we see the earth's crust right when the sedimentary rock and the earth crust when it is compared their composition is almost same are you getting it their composition is what trisha their composition is almost same what are we talking about we are talking about the rocks so rocks form sediments right rock form sediment and when you compare it with the earth crust it indicates right it indicates that the arrangement of sediment one one over the another it has taken time and it is even showing the history of earth as well right so if you are studying this rock if you will see the different different layers if you will start studying it so you will see that it is also showing the history of earth as well okay okay let's say let's say this layer formed in a particular let's say in a particular time period so here in this layer you are going to get the fossils of that time period right of that time period let's say uh, something happened now right there is some catastrophe yeah whatever it is right something happened okay and uh, let imagine ah huh? imagine don't be scared just imagine right something happened all of sudden let's say some destruction is there right and we all die what is going to happen we we all are dying right what is going to happen with the time obviously our bodies or this all the sediments in our surrounding they will also get deposited they will also acquire a, they will also get a form of that layer and with the time further depositions will be there and again 
some other rocks will form so after so 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 many years so many years when again when life will start when again they will start studying that rocks so they will find me teaching you like this hai na hai na my skin will be degenerated but yeah maybe impression is there maybe maybe i'll stay like that only imagine maybe i'll stay like that only imagine so they will study they'll compare right they'll compare that that she is in this particular layer okay so they will start relating it that at that point of time like they will they will compare it with the time period i'll tell you about the geological time scale now right so rocks are very important and especially the maximum fossils you are going to get in the sedimentary rocks now igneous i hope you know that you know the volcanic eruptions lava will come from that volcanic eruption that magma right with time the cooling will occur with time the cooling will occur and obviously that will also form the rocks right and in that rocks also there will be the fossils but you know that because that that is very hot obviously so you are not going to get that much fossils here so more fossils we are going to find here in the sedimentary and now when it is metamorphic meta means change morph means form meta means change morph means form so when sedimentary rocks you know they change their position right so they they form some metamorphic rocks bachche right they form some metamorphic rocks done bachche done bachche so maximum fossils you are going to get here and when you study that rocks right you can relate it with the earth's life history now let's say there is one layer here let's say okay so now and why is it so because rocks are formed of certain elements isn't it why is it so why am i saying so why because bachche rocks are having certain elements right they are having certain radioactive elements as well and now when you know uh, uh, now you you know that when we talk about the radioactive elements right what happened to the radioactive elements tell me i hope you know about the radioactive elements yes i hope you know about the radioactive elements you know they decay and they convert into their stable forms right uh, radioactive elements they decay and convert into a stable and convert into a stable form isn't it isn't it the decay and convert into a stable form and you know that they will do it at a constant rate isn't it they are going to do it at a constant rate yes or no yes or no the radioactive decay it will take place but at a constant rate for each radioactive element irrespective of the environmental condition right whatever environmental conditions are there still these radioactive elements they decay and they convert into a stable form right isn't it so when we study these rocks okay right when we can study that radioactive elements we can study their half life period we can we can study that and you know we can say that this particular layer is that years old okay isn't it isn't it are you getting it just a minute bachche shubhankar ma'am i start today evolution it's lecture 1 no it's lecture 2 in the description box as well it is uh, in the title as well it is mentioned bachche it is part 2 okay part 2 don't worry if you will still start you'll get to know about it no bachche okay i'm not going to finish the lecture today itself uh, it will take uh, to, i need two more lectures that's all two more lectures because i will take long uh, lectures now okay so anything else or can i just focus here see even after the class you can increase the speed of the video and you can finish this part i know initially i'm going very slow right because th this is actually not a detailed marathon you are doing it for the first time okay so that's why i'm going slow we'll start the marathons as well we'll start the one shots as well fine fine but as of now please focus here let's learn this so we are talking about the fossils now you know what are fossils now we are relating it with the rocks and now you know that in the rocks radioactive elements are there which are decaying at a constant rate and we can calculate that and accordingly we can even tell the age of that fossil done bachche done bachche so carbon dating is there right there are different different types of radioactive dating i hope you all are aware of it uranium lead method is there radio carbon dating is there potassium argon method is there right so you know it isn't it you know it well so with the help of that they can check that this like let's say if they are studying this rock they are finding some radioactive element there and there is one fossil also of course of course by studying that radioactive decay they can tell that this fossil is that years old okay so that's how that's how they can relate the things 
isn't it that's how they can relate the thing so this is what you need to understand now what you when we talk about the fossils i'm saying impression or remains of the hard parts so you know even these fossils are of different different types okay these fossils are of different different types like you will even see unaltered fossils right i hope you know the meaning here unaltered like something is like something is fossilized as such the example is of woolly mammoth right it is the unaltered it is the unaltered fossil right so woolly mammoth which it found frozen in ice as such imagine right it was frozen in ice as such okay okay unaltered fossil some are bachche some are mold fossils as well do you know that certain fossils are mold fossils what is the meaning of mold fossils can you tell me right can you tell me yes mold fossils like it is just like an impression kind of impression like see the external let's say we have the fossil of our chin too so let's say in wet soil right and in any structure in wet soil or in any structure what happened like the external external impression will stay as such external impression will stay say uh, stay as such but there is no uh, you know this uh, soft part no cells nothing at all only the external external impression is preserved as such are you getting it only the external impression is uh, preserved as such and do you know about the coprolites do you know about the coprolites that's easy in the case of rabbit also we discuss the coprolites yes we discuss the coprolites there so coprolites means your preserved fecal material preserved feces okay preserved fecal material preserved feces okay excreta is preserved excreta is preserved done bachche and sometimes you know sometimes what happened that organic part of the body the soft part of the body the cells they get replaced with the with the you know another organic matter right like the soft parts like my cells will degenerate but at that place you know uh, the from the surrounding right from the surrounding the some sediments can get deposited there so that type of fossils are also there then bachche that type of fossils are also there right so let's say that soft parts will be destroyed and the mineral deposition will occur there clear bachche mineral deposition will occur there done done so that's how it works so this is about the fossils right and fossils will fossils provide us direct idea right they are the they are the uh, most valid evidences clear bachche clear bachche okay 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 right so now when we talk about these fossils right we talk about the archaeopteryx but before that let me relate it with the geological time scale so bachche what do you know about this geological time scale anyone here in the class it is given in ncert right it is given in ncert usually we skip this part but uh, in in one shot even i am going to skip this but as of now let's discuss this as well geological time scale what do you know about geological time scale quickly what do you know about it tell me tell me anyone tell me see there are different different forms of life there are new forms of life as well and uh, they arise in the different uh, you know geological period as well actually what is happening when you talk about the geological time scale here you are comparing two things okay what are you doing here you are comparing two things bachche the geological history of earth and right the geological history of earth and the biological history of earth it correlates let me write it here the geological history of earth correlates with biological history of earth right 
it, it is given in your ncrt so it's very simple when you study a rock let's take the example of a rock you are talking about a particular layer that particular layer is having a particular fossil so you are comparing that uh, you you when you will study that layer you will get to know about the time period and you can get to when you will study that fossil you will get to know about the type of life the kind of life that used to be there in that particular time period so that's how we relate it okay that's how we relate it so geological history of earth correlates with the biological history of earth so if you want to know about the biological history you should know about the geological history as well okay so this is how uh, that's how they are related now when you talk about this geological time scale it is like a chronological order right in which we study that uh, uh, history of earth as well and the life as well right if i talk about this part right we discuss uh, here in this geological time scale bache we talk about the eras period and epoch this is what we discussed era period epoch i hope you know about it right these days question is not coming from this part but right right the question is not coming from this part but yeah right earlier the questions used to come from this particular portion so let me tell you this so what do we study here in geological time scale the era period and epoch that's what we study era period epoch so nandini here it is what it is ep what is it it is ep ep that's how i remember era period and epoch it's very simple like in a year you have the months and in that months you have the weeks okay it's more like that so in era different different periods are there in that periods epochs are there that's how it is okay that's how it is so when you talk about the era period and epoch obviously you are talking about the time also so we do you know let's just talk about the era first okay let's just talk about the era first so do you know how do we start we start from azoic azoic without life no life at all azoic archaeozoic you know kind of primitive life very primitive life or you can say that life has just started so one era is what azoic azoic means no life was there at all right no life was there at all then comes a archaeozoic so after that archaeozoic what do you have proterozoic what do you have proterozoic then comes the paleozoic then comes the mesozoic then comes the cenozoic isn't it so here you are talking about the era isn't it so azoic archaeozoic proterozoic paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic these are what these are the era right right isn't it isn't it yes or no yes or no ha tanya i i i remember this i took it as a challenge to remember this part so yes i do i do remember that so i am not saying that you should invest your energy but you should know certain important things like they used to ask age of reptiles they used to ask age of fishes age of amphibians so you know that whether are they uh, like in the question itself they mention right uh, that are they asking uh, era or the period or the epoch so this is what you should know okay so how do we start azoic archaeozoic proterozoic paleozoic mesozoic cenozoic so cenozoic is the recent era we are here in the cenozoic era are you getting it we are here in the cenozoic era done bachche done bachche are you getting it yes or no yes or no so in these eras we have different different periods so if i talk about the periods okay so mainly we talk about this part paleozoic right we mainly we talk about what we talk about the paleozoic part right we talk about the paleozoic part i'll give you the example so azoic no life is there chemical evolution when it is archaeozoic so at that time you know the certain form of life there arose and then comes the proterozoic paleozoic so with different different eras different different form of life there arose okay so now when you are talking about the paleozoic this is my way to remember it's cause dcp right i'm talking about the era periods here it's cause dcp it's cause dcp what is it it's cause dcp okay okay like cause dcp it's very simple i'll i'll, I'll tell you few words right and then you can relate it right then you can relate it so cause we are starting with the cause dcp so it's cambian ordovician hmm silurian yep devonian uh this is permian and here it is carboniferous 
I hope you are familiar with these names. Yes. Yes, I hope you know about this. So, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous or Permian. These are the name of the periods. And all that period, Subhashini, all that periods, they belong to this era. Okay, they belong to Paleozoic. So, actually it's easy. Azoic, Archaeozoic, Proterozoic, Paleozoic, Cenozoic, uh, Mesozoic and Cenozoic. Clear? So, Mesozoic, when we hear about this era, you know that reptiles were dominant. Right? Right? Reptiles were dominant. Isn't it? Remember Mesozoic? Reptiles were dominant. Clear, bache? So, in Mesozoic, you have three periods. That is your very simple Triassic, Jurassic, and uh, uh, Cretaceous. Yep. Clear, bache? And Cretaceous. Okay. Okay. So, Jurassic, I hope you all know about it. And you all have seen that movie Jurassic Park, right? Different, different parts are there. Are you getting it? So that's how we study this part. That's how we study this part. So if I am studying a rock, right, and I am finding a radioactive element, I'll calculate its uh, decay at that half-life period and all. Then I can relate it with my Earth's history. So accordingly, I can tell that, okay, at that time, this era was there or that period was there like this. Now you got it. Now you got it. Right, I am not going to teach you this part in detail because I know you cannot, you cannot get it. Right, you and here you just need to solve some, uh, you know, you can start with certain PYQs. Okay, just revise them again and again because it is a time taking, right, it is a time taking topic and uh, uh, you may be or may not be get question from this part. So, I do not advise you to waste your time here. Okay, I literally don't advise you to waste your time here. Like now one student was saying, like if I talk about the Devonian, right, Devonian, it is the period when fishes were, right. See, this is the word that you are going to read in uh, biology as well, age of fishes, age of fishes, it is the Devonian period. So, age of fishes means at this time, fishes, right, at this time, fishes were dominating, okay, at this time, fishes were dominating, they were too much. Okay, age of fishes, like when you talk about the age of reptiles, Jurassic or overall in the Mesozoic era, the reptiles were dominating. Okay, Cenozoic is the current era, Cenozoic is the current era. So, Cenozoic is your age of birds, it is the age of mammals. Okay, Cenozoic era, it is the age of birds, age of mammals and even the age of angiosperms as well even the age of angiosperms as well are you getting it they are dominating now right they are dominating now got it got it so age of fishes is devonian age of amphibians you know now fishes came first and then amphibian so devonian then comes the carboniferous right then comes the carboniferous and yes this your ordovician here it is the age of invertebrates right Ordovician is the age of invertebrates. So, here invertebrates were dominating. Okay. Here the invertebrates were dominating Ordovician. So, that's how you can remember this. Okay. That's how you can remember this. Clear, bache? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Are you sure? Right. So, I'm repeating this part again. Azoic, Archaeozoic, Proterozoic, Paleozoic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic. Mesozoic age of reptiles. Dinosaurs were there in this Mesozoic era. See, mainly in this Jurassic uh, period. So, Paleozoic, it's cause DCP, right? What is, uh, I, I just remember the initials here. So, it's cause DCP. So, C, Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian. And here it is very simple, Triassic, Jurassic and the Cretaceous. And even Cenozoic is also easy, but it's tertiary and quaternary. It's tertiary and quaternary. Is that clear? It's tertiary and quaternary. Done, bache? Done. So, mainly epochs you study here in this era. Wait. Let me write it. So, recent era. The current era is your Cenozoic. So, which period it contains? Mainly we are going to talk about the tertiary and the quaternary. Okay. And here, yes epochs are also there so but uh, you can relate that epochs with the evolution of horse right if you study ncrt if you study ncrt you know now in the examples also they have asked certain questions 
if you know the examples you know that they have asked certain questions there right do you remember that myocene oligocene i hope you know about this paleocene eocene myocene right oligocene pliocene wait 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 uh yeah so first it is pale, uh, paleocene eocene oligocene yep then comes the myocene then comes the pliocene then comes the pliocene yes it is omp right it is omp so paleocene eocene oligocene myocene pliocene and pleistocene and holocene simply it is pleistocene it is the ice age pleistocene and holocene holocene is the age of uh, human here right so that's what we study we related with the evolution of the horse okay we related with what we related with the evolution of the horse so up to this part right up to this part it is the tertiary period okay and then it is the quaternary period fine it is the quaternary period so pleistocene as i said it is the ice age it is the ice age and here in holocene what's the point which holocene is the age of man so basically right age of man means humans were dominating i don't know why do they write man always it should be human now right okay done bachi done so if you can relate this part with the evolution of horse as well right right you you related with the evolution of horse as well and not just with the evolution of horse with the other you know other plants as well we discuss this so don't worry i will tell you this it is given in ncrt after the class do check do check it from the ncrt okay okay so that's how it works fine that's how it works okay so there is one homework for you or you can say that one challenge for you right are ha i even challenge you to remember the genetic code have you done that i even challenge you to remember the genetic code that which co uh, which codon is coding which amino acid do you remember that yeah tell me do you remember that students ha huh? then it's good so that's how they are related right that's how they are related is that clear is that clear so now if in the paper let's say there is a word they are asking you mesozoic it is is it an era period or epoch so you should know that it is a it is an era if they are using the word pleistocene you should know it they are talking about the epoch right so that's how we divide the geological time scale and it is co it correlates with what it correlates with the biological time scale clear bachche it correlates with what it correlates with the biological time scale so ultimately if you need to understand the paleontological evidences the fossil evidences you should know about these things that's what i believe okay you should know about these things done bachche so it is given in ncrt but even when you read evolution from ncrt it's all mixed right they are talking about the darwin at one point and then again they are talking about the darwin so it's not that clear fine it's not that clear done bachche done bachche so that's what you need to keep in your mind done and do read about the evolution of horse do read about the evolution of horse at least give it a try right at least give it a try clear bachche clear 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 okay sure so do read about the evolution of the horse that is your modern horse modern horse is equus you find it here right yes it was also a question in the neat paper equus that is your modern horse so horse was not like that it was of the size of a fox right it was of the size of a fox are you getting it so you have to read it this is your homework now come to this topic so in the fossil evidences it is not just the rocks that we are going to study the first thing is we'll study the rocks then we'll study the layers we'll figure out which fossil belong to which particular time period then bachche we even there is a dispa uh, disparity between the present forms and the past forms as well we we try to study that also right right we try to study that also isn't it the disparity between the past and the present forms of links uh, like of the life right bachche right bachche right so we even study there that you know how they used to live and how we used to live so the most important thing here that you need to remember right it is the missing link 
राइट वॉट वी नीड टू डिस्कस बच्चे मिसिंग मिसिंग लिंक Do you know about it? Missing link. It is the part of fossil evidences, right? It is the part of fossil evidences. So in missing link, the best example that we are going to study now is your Archaeopteryx, Archaeopteryx lithographica. So it is a missing link between reptiles and birds. Okay, it's a missing link between reptiles and the birds not given in ncrt but question used to come from this part right the question used to come from this part okay so our uh, it is the archaeopteryx lithographica which is a connecting link in between your reptile and birds is that clear is that clear yes bache yes bache so it was discovered in germany this fossil was discovered in germany so it was found in the rocks of okay it was found in rocks of jurassic period so it was found in germany okay it was found in germany now let me tell you this part so in so when the word is fossil you are talking about something which is not existing today it used to be understood it used to be when you are talking about the fossil you are use, you are saying that there is something right there is something which used to be there right in the past like this is what we used to say now there are two words and most of the time i have seen people mixing these two terms but it is not right so please listen to me very carefully you talk about the missing link and we even talk about the connecting link isn't it we talk about the missing link and we also discuss what we also discuss connecting link so listen to me very carefully first of all let's start with the connecting link connecting link link means to join connecting link means which is joining which is connecting two different things which is connecting two different things the best example you have is of euglena you all know about euglena euglena which is a unicellular eukaryote we consider it as a connecting link in between plant and animal i hope you all are aware of it right i hope you all are aware of it and uh, when you talk about the ornithorhynchus duck billed platypus you used to say that is a connecting link between reptile and the mammal do you know or ornithorhynchus do you know ornithorhynchus duck billed platypus it is the egg laying mammal so we consider it as a connecting link in between reptiles and mammals so we have many examples of that isn't it we have many examples of that isn't it even in plants even in animals so they are the connecting link nandini because they are still existing <clears throat> right they are the connecting link why because they are still existing we we study about them right we study about them they are still existing right they are present now right but when you are talking about the connecting link that are fossilized you will call them as missing link right so if you are talking about the missing link you have to keep this uh, thing in your mind that they are fossilized right they do not exist now are you getting it they do not exist now right they used to be there in the past fine they used to be there in the past so re so please keep it in your mind so there are sometimes there are the questions right in which they ask the missing link now let's say you don't know about the meaning of missing link and connecting link and you are marking euglena that oh it is also a link it's not like that whatever is existing today that is a connecting link right whatever used to exist whatever is fossilized that you, that will come under the missing link okay so when you are talking about the archaeopteryx lithographica it's a missing link of reptiles and birds so that's why that's why bache it is the example of fossil evidences or you can see that paleontological evidences clear bache so that's why it is the example of what it is a example of fossil evidences it is a example of it is a example of paleontological evidences clear bache clear bache so this archaeopteryx lithographica bache it is okay it is yes it is having uh, the characters of both do you know that it is having characters of both right bache right bache okay so so it is having reptile like character as well birds like character as well i'll tell you about that also right what what it contains it is having the reptilian characters also avian characters also right reptilian characters are also there 
एवियन कैरेक्टर्स आर आल्सो देयर सो बच्चे दिस पार्ट इंडिकेट्स ओके फ्रॉम दिस व्हाट व्हाट कैन वी अज्यूम राइट राइट फ्रॉम दिस थिंग व्हाट कैन वी अज्यूम राइट सी एज पर right we we have the example of archaeotaryx lithographica so it indicates that birds are glorified reptiles okay huxley called the birds as glorified reptiles your birds they birds evolved from reptiles this is what we are trying to say here right birds they evolved from reptiles birds are glorified reptiles their ancestors are reptiles they form the birds so if i talk about the reptilian character bache so body axis is more or less lizard like right their body axis is more or less lizard like it is more or less lizard like okay lizard like body axis is there not a bird like okay they have the long tail a long tail is present and i hope you know that birds are having pneumatic bones so birds are having pneumatic bones but here in archaeotaryx lithographica non pneumatic bones are there means bones bones are not hollow in the birds that that's what we used to say pneumatic bones shiva we have completed the animal kingdom pneumatic bones the hollow bones right they are having the air spaces why to provide the buoyancy to make the bird's body lightweight but here the bones are going to be non pneumatic they do not have the they do not have the hollow spaces clear bachche they do not have the hollow spaces and moreover presence of free okay presence of free caudal caudal means tail right presence of free caudal vertebrae so basically in the case of birds right it is a feature of reptiles actually they are having caudal caudal means that tail tail vertebrae they have right so in the case of archaeotaryx lithographica this is what you are going to see presence of free caudal vertebrae like in the case of lizards clear bachche and moreover jaws are there jaws are having similar teeth in the case of birds we know that they do not have the teeth they just have the jaw right right they just have that uh, beak right but here they have the jaws and they are having similar teeth homodont kind of dentition is there similar type of teeth are there clear bachche clear bachche so jaws are having similar teeth and moreover the weak sternum is there right in the case of these uh, uh ha -huh, presence of weak sternum is there what is there presence of weak sternum usually in the birds we say the sternum is strong it is keel sternum to which the flight muscles attach but here what is it the presence of weak sternum clear bachche and now when you are talking about the avian characters so presence of feathers on the body presence of feathers on the body and uh, yeah jaws are modified into beaks into sorry into beak jaws are modified into beak clear bachche so four limb is modified into wings clear bachche clear bachche yes four limb is modified into four limb is modified into wings and you know hind limb hind limb is having hind limb is having avian plane means hind limb is having bird like body right hind limb is having bird like body right bachche so this is what you need to remember so archaeotaryx lithographica it comes under the fossil evidences and you should know about it you should know about the characters as well and i hope the era period epoch part is also clear to you yes era period and epoch part is also clear to you so any doubt yes so bachche can you tell me about any fossil park in the uh, yeah in our country can you tell me about the fossil park about any fossil park subhashini right can you tell me about any fossil park which is present here in our country 
Anyone? Which institute study that? Can you tell me? Birbal Sahani Institute. Do you know about Birbal Sahani Institute? It is in Lucknow. Right, Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleontobot Paleobotany. Right, Birbal Sahani. Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleobotany. It is in Lucknow. So Paleobotany. So now I think you can relate. Yes, exactly, Vijay. Okay, exactly. Fine. And there are, you know, there are certain coal forming, uh, coal forming forests in uh, Urissa as well. Some are in, you know, Madhya Pradesh as well. In the Bihar also, right, some uh, certain, you know, uh, fossil forests are located. Okay. Done. Fine. So, this is about the fossil evidences. And yes, your homework is to read about the evolution of horse. What do you need to read? You need to know, uh, you need to write down about the uh, evolution of horse. That's your homework. And uh, Shiva, you are saying platypus is a, is a mammal with reptilian characters. But say it's a connecting link. It is having the characters of uh, reptiles as well as mammals. So, that's what, that's why we call it as the connecting link. Okay. So, this is all about the fossil evidences. Fine, bache. So, now let's discuss it from the NCRT and then we will start the next evidences, morphological and your anatomical evidences that are very easy. So, we will talk about the analogy there. We'll talk about the, yeah, we'll talk about the analogy there. We'll talk about the homology there. And uh, that's the obvious question for the boards as well, for the NEAT as well. Now, come to this part. So, evidence that evolution of life forms has indeed taken place on earth has come from many quarters, fossils. You know that very important they are. They are the most important evidence. So fossils are the remains of hard parts of life forms which are found in rocks. And rocks form sediments of course. And a cross section of earth crust indicates the arrangement of sediments one over the another during the long history of earth. So from here right you can you can just I'm revised from NCRT, UIT. what do you want to say Sangeeta, I didn't get you, okay, so it is related, so different aged rock sediments contain fossils of different life forms, I told you already, who probably died during the formation of that particular layer, like let's say, if we all will die during the formation of the rock, obviously, if there is any uh, destruction and we all died, obviously the rock will form and this layer will contain our fossils, okay, okay, Right, so some of them appear similar to the modern organism. They represent extinct organism like dinosaurs are there. So study of fossils in different sedimentary layer, it indicates the geological period in which they existed. So the study showed that life forms varied over time and certain life forms are restricted to certain geological time spans only. And after that they are extinct like dinosaurs. Okay, you can take the example of dinosaurs as well. Hence, new forms of life have arisen at different times in the history of earth. So, all this is called the paleontological evidences. Okay, so see they are, they are asking this that how the ages of fossils are calculated. I told you already about the different, uh, you know, uh, dating techniques. So, you should, you should read it. Okay, but you should read it. Okay, recollect that methods. So, next is embryological evidence also, but we are going to start the anatomical and morphological evidences first done bache what are we going to start we are going to start the yes we are going to start the anatomical and morphological evidences first okay can you just give me the example of a, a connecting link can you just give me the example of a connecting link anyone here in the class example of connecting link Anyone, any example of connecting link? Quickly, any example of connecting link? Are other than Euglena? I told you already about Euglena. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? But say very simple. Remember peripatus. 
Peripatus, it is given in animal kingdom. What are you revising? Peripatus, it's a connecting link in between Annelida and Orthropoda. It is showing the characters of both Annelida and Orthropoda. Peripatus, worm like body. Peripatus. And uh, you will tell me about the connecting link examples from aha of plants as well right you will tell me about the plants as well then bache what are you going to tell me you are going to tell me about the plants as well so now evidences from the comparative morphology and anatomy yes next is evidences from comparative morphology and anatomy okay that's what we need to discuss okay so here as i said these are the two things that you are going to uh, discuss homology and the analogy simple it is so but i'll start with the trick here the trick is h d a c right high definition is the trick is HDAC, high definition AC. So, H stands for, you know that, H stands for homology, D stands for divergent, D stands for divergent. So, it is HD here. Now, A stands for analogy, C stands for convergent, right. So, here the trick is your AC. So, now what is the meaning of these terms? Let's observe, let's observe it from very simple examples, right. Uh, when you talk, see, homology is showing us the common ancestors right in homology we discuss about the common ancestors here ancestors are different let me explain this part okay here ancestors are different now Bache, what is happening see there are two ways let's say uh, we evolved from the common ancestor right we humans and some other species is there we evolved from the common ancestors so if we are evolving from common ancestors so of course in our case right if we are evolving from certain co from common ancestors so obviously our basic structure is going to be same right our basic structure is going to be same it's just that on the basis of our adaptation on the basis of our environmental conditions our function can vary that's the one case secondly we we right originated from different ancestors but we are living in the same conditions right our uh, mechanism is accordingly so our the functions the function is same something like that like now now let's say you will go to the colleges okay you'll start living you'll live in a hostel so obviously in hostels you will have your friends right you are going to treat them like your brothers and sisters as well it's common things like we used to say no, uh, brother from another mother sister from another mother something like that right we start treating them like like our brother sister we are we are living together we are facing same things so something like that right right something like that so that's how you know that's how you can relate the things that's how you can relate the things so when it is the homology that is divergent evolution here right the best example that we can study is of the best example that we can study here is of homologous organs of course and here of course analogous organs so but when you talk about the homologous organs right they have have common have same uh -huh, have common origin or you can say that these are the organs having same structure but function is different these are the organs having same structure but function but function is different structure is same but the function is different and here the structure is different structure is different but function is same structure is different but function is same here are you getting it are you getting it so come to this part this is hd and this is ac right so i'll give you one example the best example is of four limbs come to this part 
ओके एग्जाम्पल्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट हेयर बच्चे एग्जाम्पल्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट सो वेन यू कंपेयर द फोर लिम्स राइट वेन यू कंपेयर द फोर लिम्स सी यू आर कंपेयरिंग द फोर लिम्ब ऑफ मैन चीता वेल बैक आर एनसेस्टर आर एनसेस्टर आर एनसेस्टर इज सेम okay but we evolved in different different ways right we adapted to different different conditions so in our case also you have that humerus you have this radial ulna yes or no you have the humerus you have that radial ulna you have that carpals metacarpals phalanges now come to the cheeta the bones are going to be same so that's why we say that basic structure is the same right basic structure is the same but functions are different okay but functions function is different okay but function is different clear so basic structure is again same here but see here in the cheeta cheeta is using the four limb for running okay for chasing food but in our case we can use it in different different way right and now here in the case of bat bat also the basic structure is clear uh, the same but again it is having that patagium it is for the flying it is using that for the flying so this is what you need to keep in your mind clear bache this is what you need to keep in your mind so see their function is totally different okay so anatomy so basic plan anatomy is same but the function is different anatomy is same but the function is different and it is as per the adaptations isn't it it is as per the adaptation right so we also discuss the example of thorns of see thorns of bougainvillea and tendrils of cucurbita so they are also basic structure same right so you should know about the example basic structure is same basic structure same means anatomically they are same anatomically they are same but function is different are you getting it but the function is different fine so examples are important here okay examples are important here okay okay and then so that's what you need to keep in your mind and these are two examples given in ncert but you have to tell me about the the five examples okay that's your homework at least five examples in case of plants and animals you have to tell me about the homologous organs right five examples fine bache okay now this is about the homologous organ now see i am saying that basic structure is same basic structure is same but the function is different so don't you think it can be something like this something like this right don't you think it is the example of divergent evolution right diverge to diverge like we started from the same point right like in class 10th right you are studying the same syllabus but as per your choices right some will enter in that uh, medical stream they will uh, they, they'll write neat 2024 some will enter in that uh, you know other stream they will study the maths or commerce arts there are different different subjects then right but in class 10th you were studying the same syllabus and as per your interest in your class 11th and 12th you are going to choose the subjects same is the case here right same is the case here so divergent evolution right divergent evolution ancestor is same but as per the adaptations right the function is going to be different as per the adaptation as per the environmental condition in adaptations are different so it is the example of divergent evolution that's why the trick is hd okay that's why the trick is what that's why the trick is hd is that clear yes is that clear so next is what next is your analogous organ again very simple so here bachche what is going to happen function same structure different function same structure different am i right the function is going to be same but the structure is going to be the structure is going to be different are you getting it yes or no are you getting it so uh just give me the example eye of octopus and one more example is there now eye of octopus and yes this is the best example given in ncert eye of octopus and and of mammal so what is the main function of eye to see the objects obviously right but if you talk about their structure that's quite different but if you talk about the structure that's quite different the wings of butterfly and birds the wings of butterfly 
and birds so you know that in the case of birds right the wings are having the feathers but in the case of butterfly that wings are having what it is just the membranous extension it is just the membranous extension so the structure is different but the function is again same right but the function is again same the best example and the most confusing one the sweet potato and potato right the sweet potato and potato see sweet potato is anatomically root okay that's a root modification and here it is a stem tuber it is the modification of stem it is the modification of root so their structure is different but when you talk about their function it is the storage of food that's same their function is the storage of food and that's same isn't it? that's same isn't it isn't it right flippers of penguins and dolphins another important example flippers of penguins and dolphins so again the structure different function same so please do not miss the examples okay so it is showing the conversion to converge so ancestors are different because but they will they are living in same conditions so adaptations are same so ancestors are different functions are same so it is the example of what it is the example of convergent evolution any doubt here bache yes any doubt here do you have any doubt here? Tell me. Okay. So, in comparative morphological and anatomical evidences, it is not just the homologous and analogous organ that we study. We are also going to talk about the vestigial organs here. Okay. We are also going to talk about the vertebrate embryos. We are also going to talk about the vertebrate brain. Sorry, not the embryo, but the vertebrate heart. Right? These are other examples that we study here. Okay? And even we talk about the molecular, uh, biochemical or molecular homology. Okay? Even that's what we are going to discuss. Done, bache? Even that's what we are going to discuss. Let me write it here. So, here, no doubt the main is this part. But other than that, other than that, you also talk about the vestigial organs, vertebrate heart, vertebrate brain. And yes, 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 how can I forget? We also need to discuss the atavism here. Right? We also need to discuss the atavism here and uh, molecular homology as well. Fine. Molecular homology as well. So, any doubt? Any doubt? Yes, sure. Okay, let me finish this part. So, first of all, let's start with the vestigial organs. So, what do you know about the vestigial organs? Yes, what do you know about the vestigial organs? And yes, connecting links also, Bache. Connecting link also. I know right now it is kind of hodgepodge, but you please make clear notes, okay? So, vestigial organs. So, firstly, tell me about the vestigial organs. Yes, vestigial organs. See, they are considered as some, some remnants. Remnants means like rudiments, right? Vestigial organs, what are they? They used to be functional in our ancestor. They used to be completely developed in our ancestor. But in our case, they are just in the form of in rudimentary forms. Right? They are having the remnants. They are not functional in our body. But they will help us. Right? They will help us to understand this evolution. Right? They will help us to understand this evolution part. Isn't it? Isn't it, Bache? Yes or no? It, they can help us to understand that evolution part. Yes or no? Vestigial organ I am talking about. Okay, so they were complete and functional in our ancestors, right, Bache? But in our case, they are not functional, but they will help us to study this evolutionary aspects. Okay, okay. Yes, Bache? Like in the case of humans, can you give me the examples? Can you give me the examples? Yes.
can you just give me the examples there are many examples in the human body and not in the humans examples are there in the repti uh, reptiles as well tell me do you know about any of the example here about the vestigial organs there are many yes you are right so they are actually the remnants they were they are not functional in our body but they were functional in the ancestors or in some related species like even if i am talking about the humans yes you know that your vermiform appendix that is the example of what that is the example of that is the example of what that is the example of vestigial organ right so it is functional in some <coughs> related species <laughs> but not in our case okay and other than that uh, that nixiating the uh, the remnants of nixiating membrane right in the eye the remnants of nixiating membrane that's the example and uh, yes anything else there are many examples in the case of humans anything else obviously your wisdom wisdom teeth isn't it wisdom teeth the last molar right bachche right bachche the last molar yes and even the rudimentary body hair as well so it is believed now that we evolved from the ancestors which used to have you know the body is fully covered with the hair and all but in our case they are rudimentary isn't it they are rudimentary now so this is a example so these are the examples in the case of humans bachche so they are functional in some related ancestors or in our ancestors is that clear is that clear so they are the examples of vestigial organs and you will tell me about the vestigial organs in the insects as well sorry in the reptiles as well done bachche done bachche okay and in the plants can you tell me something about the plants yes can you just tell me about the plants yes so but if in the plants also you have many examples na in the plants you you will see that certain certain plants are having non functional non functional pistillates right they have rudimentary pistillates such type of examples are there sometimes more than one stamens are there like there are different different examples right one or more staminodes not the stamens but the staminodes are there in certain plants okay one or more uh one or more staminodes staminodes means your sterile stamens in flowers of family lebiate okay so such examples are there then bachche belonging to family lebiate okay so such examples are there so staminodes they are uh, sterile stamens or you can say that they are the vestigial stamens okay they are the vestigial stamens now bachche when you take the example of humans this vermiform appendix you know it is functional in herbivores because it is believed that it is going to you know uh, that that will help in the digestion of cellulose okay it helps in the digestion of cellulose done bachche so in, so it is a storage organ for the cellulose and it is a storage organ and it is for the cellulose digestion in herbivores so in herbivores it will be functional but in our case no it will not be right right so this is the, the this is what we study here in morphological and anatomical evidences at atavism do you know what is the meaning of atavism it is the re reappearance it is the reappearance of ancestral structures it is the reappearance of ancestral structure right if let's say if in some humans there is a reappearance of tail if tail is there reappearance of tail is there right that is atavism that is what that is atavism so it is the reappearance of certain ancestral characters or the structures which are uh, which are reduced or either disappeared clear bachche so this tail example is the best one or here right moving pinna moving pinna pinna is the part of external ear right moving pinna in some humans because the muscles of pinna they are what they are non functional that is vestigial but sometimes in some Uh, humans, you will see that they can move their pinna. Okay, okay. So these are certain examples. The appearance of tail, the appearance of tail. It is also the example of that atavism. Is that clear? That some babies are having that 
tail, short tail in some babies. Fine, 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 fine. So these are the certain examples. And you know, bache, even connecting links, connecting links, they are also the examples of morphological and anatomical evidences and missing link is the example of causal evidences so i have already given you the example of peripathus okay you even know about the neopilina neopilina you even know about the euglena you even know about the ornithorhynchus so you should know about such examples okay in the case of plants if you can give me some right i'll be very happy in the case of plants if you have some example so do let me know okay do let me know done so that's what you need to remember that's what you need to study bache and uh, yes that's all okay okay so i also told you that uh, heart of the vertebrate heart of the brain it is also the uh, sorry uh, heart of the vertebrates and the brain of the vertebrates it is also it also comes under the examples of morphological and anatomical evidences how it's very simple bache. see heart is having that basic plane is same but it is modified as per the adaptation the function is different in the case of fishes heart will just pump the deoxygenated blood only two chambers are there right and moreover moreover accessory chambers are there so basic plane if you will compare all the vertebrates you will see a basic plane is same but their function as per their function the structure is modified accordingly that's the example same is the case for the brain as well okay same is the case for the brain as well so these are certain terms that you should remember and the most important out of it is your right the homology and the analogy so please do not miss that and now if i'm talking about the molecular homology so even if you will study the protein from the apes protein from the human you will find the similarities okay okay there are certain proteins which are present in us they are also present in the apes as well so this is the example of morphological right it is the example of morphological homology are you getting it it is the example of what it is the example of morpho um, sorry molecular homology right that at molecular level also we are showing the similarity fine bache we are showing the similarity that's what you need to read so now let's quickly revise it from ncrt and then embryological evidences we will discuss in next class and uh, then the next topic the theories okay okay so see uh, such similarities can be like see here they have given the example whale, bat, cheetah, human. They share similarities in the pattern of bones, right? Though these four limbs perform different functions in different animals. Clear bache? Clear bache? I told you. So this is what? Divergent evolution and the organs are homologous. So homology indicates common ancestry. A very common question. It's a very common question okay so other examples are vertebrate heart or brains i told you already about it so such similarities can be interpreted to understand whether common ancestors were shared or not okay Achha, it's same oh my bad right so another example is your thorns of bougainvillea tendrils of cucurbita so homology is uh, based on divergent evolution uh, evolution and analog uh, and yes analogy refers to the convergent evolution is that clear bache? so examples are given here so eye of octopus and mammals flippers of penguins and dolphins okay so they have the similar habitat so accordingly they are modified in that way so examples are very important here then bache? so next is the yeah here also the same point is given in the same line of argument similarity in proteins and genes performing a given function among diverse organism give clues to a common ancestry so they are talking about the molecular homology right bache and the biochemical similarities point to point point to the same shared ancestry as well fine as well done bache okay so rest we will discuss in the next class so if there is any doubt do let me know and please do check our channel okay do check our channel right stay updated i will uh, soon i will post the video on the most important topics of the biology and uh, you should cover that topics okay i'll put one video on that also
so stay tuned to this channel subscribe to this channel and uh, uh, you know that you have to mention five five examples five examples of homologous organs five examples of analogous organs in the comment section and do let me know you like the class or not and again i'm telling you unlock 20 is there you have to use the coupon code ambika 10 and you will uh, whatever uh, uh, batch you want to join and especially for the avengers batch right you are going to get 20 percent additional 20 percent discount fine so take care thank you so much